True prosperity is holistic. These days when we talk about prosperity, all we see is money. And you see, that's why the prosperity of some persons are cut short. Because they prosper financially, but they are bankrupt when it comes to character. They are not honorable people. And so, their dishonesty will lead to a bankrupt and cut short their prosperity. Some people prosper in their business, but they don't prosper in their marriage. Home is like hell. It is never the intention of God that will prosper in only one thing. So, John was saying, Beloved, I'm praying for you. I, I have a burden for you. And the essence of that burden has pushed me to raise up an altar of prayer unto God. And the motive of this intercession that is ongoing is that you will prosper in all things. You will prosper physically. You will prosper financially. You will prosper maritally. You will prosper academically. You will prosper in your career, in your ministry. Now, everything you adventure into will succeed. Marriage will succeed. Business will succeed. Raising children, you'll be successful in all areas of life. That's what God intends for us. And also in your health. So that you will not only enjoy or generate wealth, you will also enjoy the wealth. And he's saying that in order for that to become a reality, an experience that you prosper in all things and be in health, Two things are necessary. Number one, you must have an altar where prayers will be offered to power that dimension of God's presence that will generate prosperity. In order to prosper in all things, you will need the presence of God. The manifest presence of God. But that manifest presence of God will not come until you begin to engage in prayer with God on the altar of your spirit. You know we have become the temple of God. Hope you realize that. Huh? We are what? The temple of God. So our heart has become the altar. That's why it says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, o God. So your heart is the altar of the Lord. And just as you consecrate your body as a living sacrifice to God, and you refuse to conform to this world, but rather you are transformed, you must make sure that your heart is right before God. That your heart is pure before God. That's why the Bible says, guide your heart with all diligence, for out of it proceeds the issues of life. That means the reality of your life stands from your heart. It is the words and things that come from your heart that will defy you. Desecrate your altar and your prayers. And shut the heavens over you. If what you sustain in your heart is impurity. Is uncleanness. That's why the psalmist said create in me a clean heart. So that if the heart is clean, then you will be clean. Because everything that will proceed from your heart will be pure. And then your prayers will be acceptable unto God. And it will ascend to God because your heart is pure. Do you understand that? So the Bible says that the sacrifice of the Lord is of a broken and contrite spirit. A broken heart that is subjected to God in humility, he will not reject. A contrite spirit that is quick to tremble at the word of God, accept rebuke and correction, 
and bow in submission to God, God will not despise. But one who hates correction, who will not submit to authority. The Bible says, he being often reproved and hardening his neck will be dashed in pieces without remedy. I think it's Proverbs 29, verse 1. So, when you are quick to accepting correction, you are quick to repenting, you are quick to forgiving, you are quick to taking instruction, it shows the condition of your heart. That your heart is contrite before God. Your heart is right before God. And that is the kind of heart that offers prayer that God quickly hears. So that the words of your mouth and the meditation of your heart will become acceptable to God. So I'm just telling you that <laughs> you have become a temple unto God. And your heart is the tarmac, is the pot where God will alight. You understand that? Uh, that's why it says, I the Lord does not see as man see. Man looks where? At the heart world appearance. But I look at where? The heart. He says, I the Lord try the heart. I test the heart. Because the heart is desperately wicked. So, but I will check the heart to give unto every man according to the works of his hands. So please, make sure your heart is right before God. Because that's where the altar is. So the altar is beyond just a place and a time where you go to spend time with God. The altar is beyond just the church. You know, the altar is always in the temple. The altar is your heart. 